Hello, my friends. Many colleagues asked me what is microcolpohysteroscopy. Well, they wanted to know which is the difference between colposcopy and microcolpohysteroscopy, which is the best method to investigate the premioplastic lesions of the uterine cervix. and how to perform microcorpoesteroscopy. Well, if you are interested to get an answer to your question, please follow me at this webinar. I'm waiting for you. Micro we cannot hear you. Microphone. Mm -mm. No. No. Marcos, we are not able to hear you. Anyway, if you want, you can uh, go out and come in back again. I think she did it. And now? Yes. Yes? yes. Okay. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. We are starting this webinar organized by Easter Channel team comprised of the Tacito Godoy, Thomas Moscovitz, Valdemar de Carvalho, and me. It's a pleasure to have you here today. I'm the moderator of this webinar. Let me first introduce myself. I, uh, my name is Markus Czerniakowski, and I am a coordinator of gynecology, uh, gynecological video endoscopy and endometriosis at ABC University. I would like to tell you that Professor Luigi speaks and understands Spanish, uh, uh, English, and a little Portuguese. Uh, so we can make questions in any of these languages. I confess I am looking forward to talking about the difference between colposcopy and microcopohysteroscopy. We will be debating this challenging issue with two of the greatest specialists in cervical pathologies in Brazil. I introduce Adriana Campaner. She is a coordinator of the Clinic of Pathology of the Lower Genital Tract and Coposcopy of Santa Casa de São Paulo. She is scientific director of the Brazilian Association of Pathology of the Lower Genital Tract and Coposcopy. And I introduce Marcia Cardial. She is a coordinator of the Clinic of Pathology of the Lower Genital Tract and Coposcopy of the ABC University. She is board member of SOGESP and of the Brazilian Association of the Pathology of the Lower Genital Tract and Coposcopy. Thanks for accepting our invitation and bringing us such rich knowledge and experience. Now I would like to introduce our speaker. Dr. Luigi is one of the most experienced hysteroscopists of the world. He participated as a speaker or chairman of national and international congress in most European and American countries and had more than 150 national and international scientific articles published in books and magazines. Uh, Dr. Luigi, 
thank you for to uh, accept our our inviting and give us the pleasure to hear you thank you thanks a lot marcus for your kind invitation have a uh, good evening to everyone uh, i am very honored to participate in this webinar i try to speak about uh, microcorporisteroscopy and to be very didactic uh, in order to help anyone who want to uh, reach this uh, wonderful technique, uh, in my opinion, I am in love with this technique. I hope that everyone after this speech can uh, understand exactly what is the importance of this uh, extraordinary technique in order to prevent the pre, uh, neoplastic lesions of the uterine cavity. I try to share my screen now and to let you to see, to look at my presentation. Uh, so the, this is the, uh, I hope that you can look at the presentation. The yes. Okay, thanks a lot. So I go uh, ahead. Uh, in this presentation, uh, I want to, uh, um, uh, so underline that the uh, cervical carcinoma is one of the most frequent cancer in women and uh, the, uh, it is about 6.6 percent of all female gynecological cancers. So the importance to uh, investigate and to uh, sh um, uh, prevent this cancer is in mind of all gynecologists all over the world. Which diagnostic tools we can have to prevent the uh, uh, cervical cancer? The pap smear test, uh, the Papa Nicolaou, is one of the most diffuse methods to uh, investigate, to look at the premioplastic lesion on the uterine cervix, uh, taking the cells from the cervix, but we have also the colposcopy, who is a, a inspective method to observe at the magnification the uterine cervix. And then, more recently, we have the HPV DNA test to investigate the first cause of cervical cancer in the world, that is the uh, infection of HPV, a human papilloma virus. Let's look at uh, why we have to perform these different uh, methods. The pap smear allows us to pick up cells from the cervix, put them on a slide, then some days later to observe them after coloring them in the laboratory and look uh, at the microscope to investigate if there are some modification of the uh, morphologic uh, pattern of normal cells. But this is very important. The pap smear cannot tell us if there are other altered cells on the cervix. If there are other altered cells on the, on the cervix, how many they are and where they are, they are on the esocervix inside the cervical canal the pap smear just tell us if there are some atypical cells on the uterine cervix. Calposcopy is able <coughs> to uh, investigate if there is the uh, location and the extent of some uh, altered area macroscopically. Uh, I want to underline macroscopically on the uh, external uterine cervix. But what happens if the abnormal area affects the endocervix? So if you can look at some atypical area macroscopically on the uterine cervix, how can we observe the internal loss and reach the upper limit of the pathologic area that we can observe on the uh, uterine on the uterine cervix. Colposcopy cannot know the endocervical extension, neither can observe the cells 
to express a morphological diagnostic judgment, like the pap smear. The HPV DNA test is useful to identify the main risk factor, that means the uh, HPV virus in the uh, uh, genital tract of the female. I put very close to the HPV this uh, wonderful flower whose name is Hoya carnosa, uh, very similar in the, in the shape to the HPV virus, but uh, 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 outside the uh, picture itself, uh, I have to uh, ask to myself, do you, why we can perform the HPV DNA test? The HPV DNA test is a risk factor. But what does risk factor mean? We in medicine know uh, uh, very many uh, risk factors. For example, cigarette smoking or sun exposure without protective creams are two risk factors, one for the uh, um, lung uh, carcinoma, uh, the other one for the skin cancer, for example, melanoma or other skin cancer. But having a risk factor does not mean that you have a lung cancer or a melanoma, nor allows you to predict with certainty if you will ever develop a cancer in the future. If a patient of mine call me and uh, tell uh, doctor, I am at the Bahamas and I'm smoking, for example, 40 cigarettes uh, and I'm uh, under the sun without skin protection. I cannot express any judgment about uh, the uh, presence of a lung cancer or a skin cancer. Uh, to have a papillomavirus genital infection does not mean having a diagnosis of lesion, nor does it allow you to predict with certainty if there will be a cancer in the future. It just tells us that there is a risk factor. But making diagnosis of cancer or premioplastic lesion requires the observation and the evaluation of the cells. We cannot express any judgment if you don't look at the cells onto the uterine cervix. That's true because uh, everyone knows that all over the world, when the result of cytology of the pap smear is abnormal, further investigations are suggested. For example, a colposcopy plus a targeted biopsy. If you get a result of abnormal pap smear, for example, ASCUS or LCIL, you have, you should perform a colposcopy, uh, look at some pathologic area and take a biopsy in order to get some tissue to go to the laboratory and examine the uh, uh, tissue under the microscope to investigate the, the cells. It would be great to be able to observe the cells directly onto the uterine cervix. But if you look at the uh, story, the chronogram of the observation of the uterine cervix, we know that uh, uh, just from time of Leonardo da Vinci, uh, he observed the uh, uterine cervix at the naked eye. Uh, in 1925, uh, uh, Hinzelman started to perform a microscopic observation of the uh, cervical, uh, uh, of the cervix uterine. And starting from 1949 with the uh, colpo microscope of uh, uh, Antoine and Grunberger, uh, started the first observation of the cells directly onto the uterine cervix. But that kind of uh, colposcope was too cumbersome, too difficult to use because the diameter was uh, excessive. Uh, you must consider that the tube has um, had more or less three centimeters in diameter and what 
was very difficult to use and to put this kind of uh, colpo microscope inside the vagina to look in contact at the cervical cells. So uh, about uh, uh, 30 years later, uh, Professor Jacques Camus uh, realized the first uh, microcolpohysteroscope in the world and was excellent to perform uh, the observation in contact of the uterine uh, cells. It's about 40 years that we can observe the cells directly onto the uterine cervix. So, microcolpohysteroscopy allows us to view immediately any lesion. It is able to assess the severity, the site, and the extent of the lesion, even if it's inside the cervical canal. In that area, that colposcopy usually is not able to observe. And this does not need neither colposcopy nor biopsy to express uh, a judgment about the uh, severity and the grade of uh, a lesion present onto the uterine cervix. Let's look at the difference between colposcopy and microcolposcopy. Microcolposteroscopy is the observation at microscopic magnifications. That means that we can look at the cell, unlike colposcopy, which allows just a macroscopic vision up to a maximum of, of about 20 magnification. That means that uh, uh, colposcopy is like a loop to observe maximum at 20 magnification, Microcolpohysteroscopy is a real microscope that allows us to look at the cells uh, up to 150 magnification. The colposcopic evaluation is based on the intensity, uh, on the acetoid of the reaction after acetic acid application. It looks at the edges and the surface contour uh, the vascular characteristics, all these patterns are macroscopic criteria. And microcolpohysteroscopic evaluation looks at cell arrangement, nuclear volume, uh, nuclear cytoplasmic ratio, uh, different uh, uh, dimension of the nuclei. Uh, so we look and express a judgment uh, on microscopic criteria like cytology or histology. So, the difference, someone asked me, what is the difference between endocervicoscopy and microcolposcopy? Is, the, is it the same thing? No, my friend, because endocervicoscopy can be performed with any hysteroscope. You must consider endocervicoscopy like a colposcopy of the endocervix. You imagine to look with the magnification up to 20 magnification inside the cervical canal. But microcolpohysteroscopy can be performed only with the HAMU microcolpohysteroscope. The HAMU microcolpohysteroscope is uh, uh, realized by the stores. There are no other uh, industries this, that are able to uh, sell the microcolpo hysteroscope. The endocervicoscopy has a panoramic view and you need a distension medium. Usually you have to put inside some acetic acid diluted in uh, saline solution to distend the cervical canal. And microcolpohysteroscopy has just a panoramic and contact view and you do not need for a distension medium. In uh, endocervicoscopy, you can use the acetic acid to cause an edema of the mucosa. 
and in uh, microcore crystalloscopy, you don't use acetacetate, but just Waterman blue ink as you, we can look forward and uh, a Lugol's solution. Finally, we have, as I told you before, macroscopic criteria like colposcopy for endocervicoscopy and microscopic criteria like cytology for microcore crystalloscopy. Here is an example. We can look at 20 magnification more or less uh, at the uterine cervix and the external ox, os without coloring is a um, picture very similar to the picture that we can obtain looking with a colposcope. After staining with Lugol's solution, we can look at the different captation of the uh, iodine solution. That means that where on the uterine cervix uh, glycogen is present inside the cells, the glycogen inside the cells react with the Lugol's iodine solution, coloring in uh, dark brown. The areas that do not uh, stain with the Lugol solution are areas where cells do not contain glycogen. That means that are uh, or uh, very uh, juvenile cells for example, after a, a treatment for laser or a, a coagulation of the uterine cervix, or a metaplastic cells, or um, really abnormal and pathologic cells, for example, cancer cells that do not contain glycogen. That's the base of the application of Lugol also with colposcopy. But after the, uh, the stain of Lugol, we have to put the Waterman blue ink. The Waterman blue ink is a normal ink that you can buy, uh, not in a, a scientific place, but you can buy uh, in a drugstore. And if you look at the picture uh, on the left and on the right side, you can see how uh, we can observe at high magnification the squamocolumnar junction on the left or the patterns of the uh, cells on the right. And if you look at the small area uh, uh, here, you can see how we can uh, look at the uh, glandular orifice at 150 magnification and the uh, picture that you look uh, on the right side is uh, exactly the area that I marked with the uh, yellow uh, area in the center picture. What do you need to perform a microcolposcopy? Well, we need ob obviously a light source and a fiber optic cable to illuminate the uterine cervix because uh, I remember that when I study, uh, they told me that the uterus has not a, a self-illumination, so we have to put light uh, inside the vagina. Obviously, we, we need some cartons, but the best and more important things are two. One is the Hamu microcolposteroscope, and second one is the Waterman blue ink, as I told you before. The uh, Hamu microcolposteroscope has also uh, a connector for the light cable and a small focusing knob. This is the main difference uh, between the Hamu microcolposteroscope and the normal hysteroscopes that don't have a focusing knob. That means that you can use the Hamu microcolposteroscope like a microscope focusing to have always sharp the tissue on the tip of the instrument because the, uh, deep, the depth of field of this kind of optical system is very short, so you have to focus continuously to have everything sharp. 
This is how to perform the solution, the application of local solution with a cut and swap. Then we can look using the micro corpo hysteroscope like a uh, corposcope, you can approach the tip of the instrument to the uterine cervix and look for areas that are not colored with the uh, uh, uterine solution. Here you, you can look at the very small uterine negative uh, so, uh, area that goes inside the cervical canal. After the lugol, you can apply with another cotton swab the Waterman Blue Ink. That is the only uh, stain able to color the cells of the uterine cervix. And if you go in contact and focus, you can observe exactly the cell like you, can, uh, you were on the, under the microscope on a slide. But Let's go on just to give you some more uh, information. Here is a scheme uh, where we can look how to focus the lateral knob to put everything uh, sharp. And on the right side, you can look uh, how to uh, move the tip of the hysteroscope because you must remember that the extremity of the microcorpohysteroscope is at 30 degree lens. So that means that if you go to observe the inferior uh, lip, you have to rotate 100 and, and 180 degrees the hysteroscope. Then you can go inside the cervical canal and look at what uh, happened inside the cervical canal. Here is how to hold the microcorpohysteroscope. On the left uh, picture, you can look uh, how with the right hand, you can rotate the uh, knob to get always sharp. But if you uh, rotate 180, the instrument to stay in contact on the posterior lip, as you can look on the right picture, uh, the fib fiber optics cable is uh, up, the uh, focusing knob is on the other side, and you can use more easily the focusing knob to take everything sharp. But the most important thing to perform microcorpohysteroscopy is to have a point where to place uh, firmly without to avoid trembling the extremity of the microcorpohysteroscope. Because you must consider that the length of the microcorpohysteroscope is about 23 centimeters. If you add the endocamera, you have a very long instrument and it is very difficult to stay firmly exactly uh, to look an area who is no more uh, wide than uh, uh, four or five millimeters. So you should always have something where to put the microcorpohysteroscope and the uh, vaginal speculum is the best thing that you can get to stay very firmly uh, on the uterine cervix and uh, scan in contact everything you have to look. This is uh, an example of uh, microcorpohysteroscopy in a normal uterine cervix. You just can look at the external orifice, but if you go inside with the tip of the microcorpohysteroscope and you can focus, you can very easily look at small cervical polyps, the uh, papillary uh, uh, cells, the uh, endocervical structure, the glandular orifice, the plica palmata, then you go back with the extremity of your microcorpohysteroscope and you can go out after look, look at, at the internal uh, canal. You can see on the upper uh, part of the external loss, uh, 
two small holes uh, that I show you later on. After the Lugol solution, we can have an idea of the content uh, in glycogen of the uterine cervix, as we uh, do with the uh, colposcope. But after staining with blue ink in contact, we can look exactly at the morphology of the superficial cells. If you see uh, on the right upper, in, on the left upper, there is a glandular office in the macroscopic view that we are examining now at in contact. This is uh, an area where the superficial cells have not uh, reconstructed the squamous epithelium. Here we can look at the squamous columnar junction and the metaplasia over cervical papillae exactly to follow this line because it's the area where the most important change can be uh, um, done by the uh, HPP. You also see the red blood cells uh, running into capillaries that just to show how the magnification is important to uh, express a judgment on uh, the morphology of the, of the cells. In case of uh, infection of HP2, the coelocytes are the most frequent and the pathognomonic uh, patterns uh, of the uh, HPV infection. If uh, someone of you has experience in looking at uh, the cells at microscope, uh, I believe that have uh, no difficulty to recognize the typical pattern of the coelocyte. The coelocyte is uh, cells that have a hole uh, around the uh, big nucleus in the middle, and the hole is just made by water. Uh, if you perform a PAS uh, coloration staining uh, in uh, cytology, it, it is uh, glycogen-free. That means that that hole in the coelocyte is just the expression of the sufferance of the cell uh, induced by the human papilloma virus, and it is made by just water without glycogen. Okay, let's go, for example, at another Im image. Uh, in case of uh, uh, infection, you can look at a very wide uh, net of capillaries with the red blood cell uh, running very quickly inside the, the capillaries. And you can move uh, your, the tip of your microcorpoid stethoscope until you can reach the uh, squamocolumnar junction where you can express a judgment about the uh, presence or not of a preneoplastic lesion. Here is another uh, typical uh, pattern of the uh, HPV infection that I have described together with Professor Picchioni many, many, many years ago in 1980. In 1986, I remember, and this is the vortex arrangement. The vortex arrangement means that on the uh, cervical surface, you can look at the cell uh, that in Spanish we say disposición en remolino. Uh, that means uh, a vortex arrangement typical of the aspect of the HPV onto the uterine cervix, but if you take these cells uh, from the uterine cervix and you put on the slides when you perform a pap smears, many times the cytologist is not able to, uh, in the, uh, to understand that is a uh, an HPV infection because when you put this arrangement on these slides, they lose this typical arrangement vortex and looks like normal cells. Uh, here is a high grade lesion. You can very clearly see how much they are different from normal cells. 
uh, you can look that uh, many cells uh, are polynucleated, three or four nuclei inside the same cell, and they are very similar to the atypical cells as we can look under the microscope at 250 uh, magnification. Let's go uh, ahead, looking for another aspect of uh, uh, HSIL. Uh, that means you can very easily look at the uh, anisocaryosis, big uh, irregular nuclei, uh, coilocytes, and the aspect of this uh, area is com totally different from the normal one. And other thing very interesting is this always there is a, a sharp boundary between the pathologic area in high seal and the normal epithelium. This sharp boundary between normal and pathologic epithelium is always present also we, when we observe um, the histology. So what you can look uh, by <clears throat> microcorpohysteroscope on the uh, cervical surface is the same, exactly the same, that you can look uh, on the uh, histology uh, after a biopsy. Another example of a high-grade lesion, look at the uh, these big nuclei, very close one each other, and the difference at the same magnification <clears throat> between the upper part and the lower part. In the lower part, there is normal epithelium with uh, pycnotic nuclei inside the cells. And in the upper part, uh, big nuclei, uh, uh, because there is a H, uh, S, I, L. And always you can encounter a sharp boundary, as I can show you in this picture. This is the sharp boundary between healthy and pathologic tissue. And is the same that we can uh, see uh, in a histologic sample. Another example of a sharp boundary between H seal and normal tissue, as you can see here, always the sharp boundary. In the upper right, there is normal tissue with no, uh, small pycnotic nuclei. On the left uh, 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 part, we can look at H seal. Very simple to to observe. Well, only microcorpohysteroscopy it allows us in a single session. This is very important because in five minutes we can express. Uh, our diagnosis and tell to the patient what uh, she has to do. Because in a single session, uh, we can know if there is a lesion, which grade of lesion is, if low grade or high grade, it depends from many factors, but just for uh, microscopic criteria, uh, which is the extent of this lesion, uh, and where are, uh, the boundaries are. And consequently, you can decide whether to repeat the control because it's a very low grade lesion. So we can wait uh, for the uh, immunity system of the patient to uh, fight against the, the, the virus. Or if there is a high grade lesion, we can decide immediately to perform a targeted excisional treatment, but we know in advance uh, the area that we can uh, uh, resect because we know in advance what are the boundaries on the external cervix and even inside the cervical canal because the instrument that has just 4.5 millimeters of diameters can go inside and uh, I always use it also as a normal hysteroscope to go inside the uterine cavity. So 
The key point number one is that it is possible to observe cervical cell directly on the uterine cervix, if even if the squamous columnar junction is endocervical, using the HAMU micropole polystereoscope. The squamous columnar junction is this uh, transitional area between squamous and uh, uh, columnar epithelium, and is the area where uh, the most important modifications uh, uh, rise in the, uh, induced by the human papillomavirus. Uh, we co we know three types of squamous columnar junction. Type 1 lies completely outside the anatomical internal of ostium. The type 2 is partially inside the anatomical internal ostium. And the type 3 is completely inside. This is the type of squamous columnar junction that we always uh, or very often encountered during menopause because the, uh, uh, the loss of estrogen stimulation uh, induces the uh, squamous columnar junction to go inside the cervical canal. So it is very difficult just, for example, with colposcopy or uh, with cytology, you, we have to use a cytobrush to go inside the cervical canal to take some cells from inside. Uh, I'm saying that it is very difficult if we have not the microcorporeal to look inside the cervical canal. Those are the example of the three kinds of squamous columnar junction. How we can measure the endocervical extent of a lesion? When we, we reach the upper limit of the lesion, uh, we can uh, put the finger at the level of the external orifice and extract the endoscope together with the finger and put mm. it very close to the, uh, uh, to measure the uh, extent of the endocervical lesion. So we can know in advance how much we, we can cut when we perform uh, uh, an excisional treatment to cut off uh, endocervical lesion. Uh, those are some uh, uh, data from my database, uh, the correlation between the squamous columnar junction and microcorporeal uh, In uh, about 1,300 consecutive microcorporeal I have seen that uh, the uh, squamous columnar junction was mainly uh, inside the cervical canal uh, in 70 percent of the cases. That means that uh, it is very difficult uh, without the use of a microcorporeal stereoscope to assess in advance where the uh, pathologic patterns can uh, uh, go inside the cervical canal. So the key point, point number two is that uh, high-grade lesions are more frequently found inside the cervical canal. And in the relationship with the uh, HPV DNA test, uh, not always the presence of a high-risk HPV means that there is a lesion. As you can look in this scheme, in about 10% of patients with a positive high-risk HPV, the epithelium was normal. What means? That means that uh, the presence of HPV do not mean that that kind of HPV was able to induce a modification in the cells that cover the cervical, uh, the cervix of the uterus. In other words, if a patient has a positive test for the presence of a high risk a human papilloma virus, this do not mean that uh, she must have a modification, a preneoplastic lesion on the uterine cervix. That's why microcorposcopy can uh, tell us immediately if there is the need to perform an 
excisional treatment, or we can wait uh, some months to control again the patient and look if there is any modification to the uterine cervix. So the key point three is having a high risk HPV does not mean to have a cervical lesion to treat. In conclusion, just to look at the treatment, we can use an electric loop or cold knife. It depends from the um, area that we have already seen on the uterine cervix. For example, on the left side, if you use an electric loop, the procedure is much shorter, but we have uh, uh, less opportunity to tailor the uh, exact uh, dimension of the uterine cervix to cut off because the uh, loop is standard. In the right uh, side, you can look as a, a cold knife conization. It's longer as procedure, but we can uh, decide how long we can go inside the cervical canal. For In this example, you can see how the length of the cone is two centimeters and a half on the right and just one centimeter on the left side. And how we have to decide how long we have to enter inside the cervical canal? The answer is very uh, simple for me. We have to perform a microcorpoesteroscopy before I submit a patient to echonization so we can know in advance how long we have to cut inside the cervic cervical canal to have the uh, uh, to perform a, a safety excision and uh, we don't leave anything on the uh, uterine cervix. To conclude. Microcorposcopy compared to cytology allows us to identify location and extent of altered cells. And also is much more quick because the answer to the patients is immediate. We do not have to wait uh, for the uh, laboratory response uh, that can uh, come back after one week or more. Compared to colposcopy, allows us to look the cells directly on the uterine cervix and to look inside the cervical canal to establish the eternal limit of the lesion so that we can perform a tailored surgical excision with the cold knife or with the uh, electric loop. And compared to the HPV DNA states if there is a lesion now and which degree, because having, as I told you before, having a positive HPV DNA test does not tell us if there is a lesion now. Maybe it can anticipate the develop of a, of a lesion in the future. But if a patient has a HPV DNA test positive now, we cannot, we cannot know if there are altered cells in this moment. So, uh, to conclude, I want to thank for your attention and just to show that uh, uh, if uh, we want to perform a microcorpoesteroscopy, you should buy the uh, Hamu microcorpoesteroscope. One week ago, I asked the, to the company if they sell uh, the microcorpoesteroscopy, and they told me, no, it is out of production. So I asked, and how can I do to uh, mm, continue to perform microcorpoesteroscopy if I break my microcorpoesteroscope. No problems, they told me. We have uh, realized a new uh, Hamu microcorpoesteroscope. We call it type 3. It's uh, a bit smaller 
than the original micro Volpo oscilloscope uh, is about 2.9 uh, millimeters in diameter and it reach uh, just 60 uh, magnification but using a, a camera with the zoom we can uh, observe the cells as i show you before and this very simple to continue to perform microcorporisteroscopy. I hope to have transmitted you the enthusiasm to uh, reach this kind of technique and just to remember that uh, for people, for Thomas who have been in Roma, in Piazza Navona, very close to the uh, embassy of Brazil, there is the fountain and uh, I asked to change the fountain and make a monument to the microcorpo hysteroscope. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, I Professor am... Luigi. Uh, right? Thank you, Professor Luigi. Uh, your presentation was amazing. Uh, it was fantastic. Uh, I, I think, in my opinion, this is a very difficult subject to talk about. And uh, you've talked it in a very easy way, in my opinion. You've made it easy to understand. And congratulations. Thanks uh, a lot. Thing. Now, I, I would like to listen to our debaters, uh, the comments and the considerations. Uh, Professor Marcia, uh, Professor Adriana, please. Uh, hello, Professor. Uh, I'd like to congratulate you for the brilliant exposition. It was wonderful. Uh, you speak loud and slowly, and I could understand everything you At this told. time, I cannot speak more, more quickly because it's very late in Italy, so I am quite asleep. That's why I speak <laughs> very loud. Yes, uh, your slides were so clean and your films were wonderful. Uh, the cells like this, I like it very much. Uh, I have no experience with this method in my country, uh, in my university. Marcia will tell you about her experience. But uh, in our service, we work in a public hospital and we have uh, limited resources. And uh, we use when we have. And uh, it's very common to find uh, patients with abnormal cytology and normal colposcopy. And with these cases, we uh, use cervical curettage uh, okay. or cito brush. And we have good experience, but sometimes it fails also. Uh, and now we are using to help for the diagnosis, uh, we are using immunos uh, uh, immunohistochemistry. Yes, for P16 and KA76. Do you know? Uh, yeah, if, sure. uh, and when we have like this uh, normal, uh, abnormal cytology and normal coposcopy, we use this immunohistochemistry. And when it's abnormal, we indicate colonization because we don't have your tech, your tech, your your exam here. I and, understand. And may I may I make a comment on this? Yes, of course. Uh, thanks a lot. The problem is that uh, if you have a, a negative colposcopy and a positive cytology, you imagine that there is something inside the cervical yeah. canal. There are many uh, mm, publications uh, that have already demonstrated that the uh, endocervical curettage cannot uh, tell us where is the exact mm -hmm. location of the pathology. So you can get some pathologic cells from inside the cervical canal, but you cannot know in advance how long you have to cut. Yes. Uh, yeah. The literature 
tell us that if you cut exactly 2.5 centimeters of uh, cervical canal, you have 98% uh, of success to remove completely the lesion because in 98% of the cases, the endocervical extent is no more than 2.5 centimeters. But because the most of patients with endocervical pathology, with cervical pathology, are younger women yeah. with desire of pregnancy, there is a big difference for a young woman to, to have cut five millimeters or 25 millimeters yes. for cervical canal. This is the first uh, observation. The second observation uh, uh, is that the more you cut inside the cervical canal, the more uh, wide and big are the vessels. So you can encounter a more bleeding. Yes. It's different to cut five millimeters yes. on the exocervix or to cut 2.5 centimeters inside the cervical canal. That's why microcorpohysteroscopy is, uh, in my opinion, the best method to uh, treat young patients uh, all over the world. And another just thing, in, uh, in Sao Paulo, there is a colleague of yours, of mine, whose name is Sonia Mione. Yes. Yes, yes that performs microcorpohysteroscopy. Yes. He... A, a good friend of mine, and we knew from many, many, many years ago. Yes. When, when you finish your, your speech, I thought, I want a Hamu stereoscope for me. I'm going to <laughs> talk to my chief and ask for one of these. Um, and it was wonderful to, to, to use this technique to young women, yes? Yes, and sure. I would like to to ask you a little few questions. Uh, the first one is: How long do you spend in a, an exam? How long? Uh, okay. I started to perform my first microcorpohysteroscopy in 1981. It's 39 years. I was tall with green eyes <laughs> and blonde hairs. <laughs> Look at me now, how, how long uh, is passed? No, uh, uh, outside the, the jokes. Uh, it's uh, uh, 39 years that I perform microcopisteroscopy. During the first years, I was working very strictly in connection with my friend Aldo Vecchione, who uh, is not more with us now, uh, but he was a pathologist. So we perform the correlation between the uh, microcorpohysteroscopic uh, uh, patterns and the histologic uh, result. After two years, uh, we did not have any uh, necessity to continue this uh, um, uh, correlation because we learn exactly uh, what are the uh, histologic patterns looking with microcorpohysteroscope. And nowadays, uh, I am already in my office because I finished to, to visit patients uh, about one hour before starting the, the, the speech. Uh, and I perform uh, routinely my microcorpohysteroscopy. Now, it uh, with my experience about four or five minutes to perform everything. Wow, it's so quick. Yeah? If you want, but I put on the end of my presentation, I have also a short video to show you how to perform uh, with the patient microcorpohysteroscopy without cut. So you can look at the uh, real time. Uh, uh, but 
maybe that someone on the uh, in the audience can ask me something so i want to leave the time to to answer to some question if i can be useful for for people oh to... of course uh, yeah. you told about you told us about cervical intraepithelioneoplasia high grade lesions yes okay and sorry for the telephone and no no problems i cannot answer it's far from me <laughs> here <laughs> And uh, we, you told about the high-grade cells, and you sure. show uh, the, their aspect. It's very beautiful, and we can differentiate uh, normal cells from the cell. Sure. Yes, it's wonderful. Do you have experience about uh, looking at adenocarcinoma in situ? This is the real problem of the uh, microcolpohysteroscopy and not only of the microcolpohysteroscopy. As you know, the adenocarcinoma in situ is uh, a minimal uh, percentage of all uh, carcinoma of the of yes. women. But uh, for I have uh, no typical pattern in contact for the adenocarcinoma in situ. I have already seen about 10 adenocarcinoma during these 40 years, no more than 10 adenocarcinoma, but the diagnosis is made just uh, looking in panoramic view, like endocervicoscopy. Oh. That, that means that if you go inside the cervical canal with your microcolpohysteroscope at medium magnification, that means about 20 magnification, exactly like a colposcopy of the cervical canal, you can look at an area with atypical vascularization, with the loss of normal papillae, with a, a very flat epithelium, very similar to the squamous epithelium of the external uh, um, tissue. And if you go there, uh, coloring with uh, the blue waterman and using a, a cotton swap, very small, you can look in contact uh, very small and atypical cells, one uh, close to the other. Consider, and this is very important, I didn't tell you before during my presentation that the waterman blue ink is is able to stay in just uh, squa down. squamous epithelium and metaplastic epithelium the cylindrical cells do not stay with the uh, waterman blue ink that means that if you color in blue some tissue inside the cervical canal it is not cervical it is not cylindrical cell but metaplastic cell and this metaplastic cell can be typical or atypical and if you go in contact you can make a differentiation but it is not very easy it's a real problem Yes, it's a problem here in Brazil. We now find a lot of young women with adenocarcinoma in situ, and sometimes we find the lesion in a stage that invasive cancer, and they are so young and would like to, to detect it earlier than. And I sure. thought, yes, and I, I, I thought that microhistoroscopy could help in this also, yes. And one last question, Marcus. Uh, you talked about a uh, menopausal woman that they have stenotic uh, os. Uh, do you make some dilatation? Uh, May I show you a, a yeah. small video? Okay. Uh, let me share the screen. Tell me if you can look at what I am showing. Do you see the presentation? Yes. 
Okay, I go ahead just to show you, oh, sorry. Uh, just to show you how I can dilate the uh, the uterine cervix. The position, the, the technique, okay. Here is how we can uh, apply the microcorpo hysteroscope on the posterior uh, speculum. And then if you look at the picture after Lugol, you see that there is a very uh, small external orifice, okay? Now I show you how I can use without make pain the dilatation. I put a small scissor inside the uterine cer cervix and then I extract very quickly. This allow the dilatation of the external orifice and then I can go inside as I'm showing you during this in this picture and I can explore the internal cervix, the cervix after opening the uh, uterine cervix with my scissors. Hoping oh, that it was clear. Yes, very clear. Thank you for your answers, Professor. I'm going to uh, give back my to Marcos. Thank you, thank, thank you, Adriana, you. for your consideration. Now I want to to listen, uh, Professor Marcia Cardial, uh, her comments and her uh, questions or her considerations. Thank you, Marcia. Microphone. I believe. Oh, okay. sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Yes. And I would like a um, uh, thanks uh, to, to invite me. And uh, I would like a uh, 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 congratulations, uh, Professor Luigi Montevecchi. Uh, I, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a brilliant, uh, your speech. Uh, I would like, I, uh, started, um, the microcorp uh, stereoscopy in 10 or 20, I don't know, years ago. And I have many problems because, um, I, I started, uh, side by side, uh, with the, uh, a pathology. Pathology okay. uh, is, um, uh, is in uh, side by side me, and I when I I saw uh, the the epithelium, uh, I um, uh, uh, I saw the the high seal or the metaplasia, um, uh, the um, the pathology. And told me it's it's uh, a, a meta pleasure is true. Um, I I agree, uh, but uh, it, the, the the exam for us for for me is uh, very longer, uh, and I enthusiastic for your timing. Uh, it's Thanks a lot, it's lot. great. It is great. Um, and uh, it's uh, uh, a very good uh, practical. Uh, uh, the microcope uh, stereoscopy is uh, for forgot uh, in, uh, in lower pathology in in the last years, and it's uh, very important introduce it. Uh, he introduced it now. Uh, Thanks, I don't know if I I uh, to uh, talk. Uh, yeah, yeah, you express exactly express. what is your feeling now. Uh, just let me add one thing. Uh, when I started to perform microcolesteroscopy, this was also for uh, uh, because 
the microcorporistroscope is uh, the cheapest instrument that we can buy. Why? Because in the same instrument we have a corposcope, a hysteroscope, and the microscope. Because we can use the Hamoun microcorporistroscope like a normal hysteroscope using a, a dilatation medium liquid to go inside the cervical canal and the uterine cavity. We can have a, 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 a wonderful visualization of the uterine cavity of, at high magnification using it like a hysteroscope. We can use it like a colposcope at 20 magnification and we can use with the acetic acid and the lugal solution like a colposcope but if we want to learn to use it like a microscope we cannot use the acetic acid just lugal solution waterman blue ink uh, very close uh, with a pathologist or someone who is able to explain you the different patterns and you have in the same instrument three different kind of uh, opportunities this is excellent and i i had uh, uh, many problems with the agc the glandular squamous cells uh, and i agree with you uh, this is uh, more difficult uh to to saw uh, the the glandular the glandular uh, epithelium atypical sure. it's very sure. and uh, uh, the uh, when we we make the uh with the residents um uh, they uh this come uh, i don't know this camo the the epithelium and it, it's difficult um, uh, to to saw the 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 canal and uh, because uh, the the epithelium is uh, if you 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 fragile need, it's very very big, uh, very careful yes yeah it's fragile it can be there yes. is a bleeding so but the problem is not to uh, arrive uh, at the point where the uh, endocervical cells are already uh, neoplastic. Because when there is a neoplasm, microcorpoisteroscopy does not, uh, has no significance. We can use the microcorpoisteroscope to perform a very early diagnosis before to reach a neoplasm of the uterine cervix. And I believe that microcorpoisteroscope is a, a wonderful instrument and it is not very difficult to learn the different patterns. Let me say this thing. I've been organizing with some friend of mine in Mexico uh, some uh, um, lesson to teach this technique to Mexican colleagues. You must consider that in five days, they were able to perform microcorpisteroscopy. Consider the first two days to learn about the morphology, normal and pathologic of the, of the uterine cervix, and three days to perform uh, uh, the manual to get the manuality to perform microcorpoisteroscopy to get some good image to 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 look at in other words you must consider that cervical pathology is not so difficult because on the uh, uterine cervix we have just three things normal cells atypical cells and metaplastic cells, yes. no more. It is not a very wide pathology. If you employ three days 
to learn normal cells, three days to learn metaplastic cells, and three days to look at the pathologic cells. After nine days, you will know exactly the morphology of the cervical pathology. It's yeah. not very difficult. The problem is to get some good image to look at. It's difficult for the beginners to maintain very firmly the microcorpohistroscope to get some image as I show you before. But it is not so difficult if you have someone who will teach you how to um, uh, hold the microcorpohistroscope, the camera, and how to get good images to, to, to look at. Yes. Uh, and uh, the, um, it's, it's perfect. Uh, it's very, very good ex uh, exposure. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the, the leap uh, after the, the microscope uh, stereoscopy uh, confirm if you is all right uh, sure. in your... There is a very, very... Uh, um high correlation between the microcorpohistoscopic uh, diagnosis and the final uh, histologic uh, uh, confirmation. Obviously, when I uh, began many, many years ago, I just was able to express a diagnosis of normal and pathologic uh, tissue. Now I am able to differentiate uh, between low grade, high grade, and during high grade is a CIN2 or a CIN3. I try to express the diagnosis before in order to uh, make a correlation be between what I s see with my eyes and what is the final diagnostic uh, uh, specimen. Yes, it's perfect. Mm. Okay. But it is okay. not important. It is important to differentiate from normal and pathology to take off the pathology and leave the normal on the uterine cervix. Thank you. Thank you, Marcia. Thank uh, you. Professor, Thank we you have for... a lot of uh, some, uh, some questions for our attendees. Audience. And uh, uh, your, your good friends, uh, uh, Gian Pietro Gubini send you bravo Luigi thanks a lot Gian Pietro <laughs> uh, Asma Zergi uh, ask you what makes this technique unknown and not usually used di uh, in diagnosis sure it's the, the mo very interesting question and this question is the most uh, frequent asked question during my speech. The problem is my opinion are two. First one, that mainly a gynecologist is not a morphologist. And morphologist is not a gynecologist and do not have has any uh, correlation with the patient. So who knows cytology lives in the laboratory. The gynecologist who meet the patient usually don't know cytology. To perform microcorpohysteroscopy, you have both experience in the same person. So you have to be a gynecologist who is also a morphology, a morphologist who knows the aspect of the uh, cells. Second one is that during the uh, first uh, um, essays, when you are a beginner, you have uh, a very high difficulty to uh, obtain some a image that can be interpreted. Because if the microcorpus it moves, you cannot look 
clearly at the cells. So even if you know the cytology, you are not able to express anything. But if you are able to obtain a good image uh, holding very firmly the microcorpuscoscope, as I show you before uh, on the spectrum, uh, moving very slowly all over the area, you can get some good image. And with some month of experience, you can perform a microcorpuscoscope. And during the first uh, periods, you can also uh, take more biopsies in order to have a correlation between what you look and what is the real situation on the uterine cervix. The more you get experience, the less the biopsies you have to, to, to perform. Okay, uh, Alvaro Duran, uh, ask you uh, my congratulations on this extraordinary conference to Professor Montevecchi. Very good presentation. How long does the procedure last? And Waterman Inc. does not damage microhysteroscopy with use uh, comparative cast with traditional colposcopy. Best regards. Okay, so uh, I just have understood the second and the third question. What, which was the first one? The first. How long does the procedure last? Ah, about, as I told before, about five yeah. minutes in my experience during the first period. You can uh, need also uh, 20 minutes to perform a microcorposcopy because you have to proceed very slowly, uh, performing exactly all the steps in order to obtain a clear view. But with the experience, I just uh, use um, no more than four or five minutes to complete the diagnosis. Regarding the Blue Waterman, no. The Blue Waterman is uh, an ink who is uh, atoxic, for the patient, that means that uh, uh, during the first years, uh, Jacques Camus made a, a study on, uh, the, on mouses in the University of Paris, and the uh, DL50, uh, that means the lethal dose was zero. That means that injected into mice, the ink was a toxic. You can eat this ink without problems because it's a toxic. So if even if the patient absorbs the, the ink because it's metabolized and go inside the cells and the nuclei to color them, there is no problem. And also there are no problem for the microcorpoisteroscope because after the procedure, you can wash and clean your microcorpoisteroscope and sterilize it uh, in, uh, with the last uh, type, uh, AMO3. You can go uh, put it in also in the autoclave. Mm -hmm. You can uh, uh, put and sterilize with the head, no problem for viruses or bacteria. Uh, so no problems for the for the microcorpuscoscope. The third uh, question was uh, uh, the comparative costs with. Uh, ah, wait, wait, as I told before, it's uh, quite cheap because consider that now in Italy uh, you can buy the Hamu microcorpuscoscope uh, about six. Uh, thousand euros but if you consider that you buy with six thousand euros a microscope a hysteroscope and a corposcope i am sure that if you buy three separate instruments you cannot uh, spend the this cheap 
um, price. Yeah. Obviously, if you already have a colposcope and uh, uh, a microscope, the microcolpohysteroscope is not so cheap, but you can use the same uh, uh, light source of the hysteroscope, the same light cable of a hysteroscope. So if you buy for an hospital, you have just to buy the instrument and no more. Yeah. Uh, Thomas Moskowitz asks you, can we must have a biopsy or just an uh, exam is enough? No, I never uh, perform a biopsy. Uh, I perform a biopsy, as I told you, during the first two or three years of experience last century. <laughs> but now there is no need, even because if I see uh, pathologic tissue, I perform uh, a map uh, on, a, on a scheme of the uterine cervix and I perfectly know in advance how much and where I have to cut with a, the with a lip. So I get the uh, final specimen to get the final diagnosis. There is no need of an intermediate biopsy to, because I see that there is a pathologic tissue and I have to cut off that pathologic tissue. Okay, uh, another question, uh, Amal Drizzi. I wish to know the opinion of the pathologist about gynecologists assessing cells in terms of uh, re reability, for instance. And second question, are we are sorry, uh, Marco. We are in terms uh, we... of uh, rehabilitation, for ah. instance. And mm. second question is: Are there any correlations between microcoposcopy and hysteroscopy of the endocervix? Please. Okay, Amal. Uh, mm. There is a, a, a very high correlation between the uh, cytologic uh, and histologic sample and what I uh, see using the microcorpohysteroscope, obviously after many years of experience. So the correlation is very high. Uh, there is also a publication that we made with the Instituto dei Tumori di Milano, uh, the Institute of Tumors of Milan, many years ago, and we presented this work uh, uh, at the uh, World Congress of Colposcopy in 1990, uh, just in, uh, in uh, uh, Brazil. Uh, a work that we made together with uh, Bernardina Stefanone and Professor uh, Giuseppe De Palo. And we made a correlation between colposcopy, microcolposcopy, and histology. And the correlation was 90-80% for microcolposteroscopy and 84% percent for colposcopy. So it's a very high correlation. And regarding the, the second question of uh, Amal, uh, that was, uh, uh, Marco, tell me again, please. What? The second question of Amal. Ah, the second, the second minute, I have another. The second question is uh, uh, one minute. Yeah, sure. No, no, I, I one. No, no, that the was second question is: uh, Are there any correlations between microcosmos? Ah, okay, micro okay. The, the correlation between yes. of the endocervix. Uh, no, there are two different things because, as I told during my presentation. The hysteroscopy of the endocervix is called also 
uh, endocervicoscopy. That means an observation at 20 magnification, no more, like a colposcopy, of the endocervical canal. So you can look at the endocervix using the hysteroscope at low magnification. Microcolpohysteroscopy is totally different. You look in contact at 150 magnification and you look at the cells. So the diagnostic criterion is totally different from a microscopic point of view. If I look inside the cervical canal with an hysteroscope, I can look at the papillae, at the plica palmate, at the glandular orifice, but I cannot look at cells with microcolposcopy. I also can look at the cervical canal at the uh, medium magnification in a panoramic view, but the most important thing is to look in contact after staining with Waterman Bluing. So it's a microscopic evaluation. It is not possible to very, very good. a correlation. Um, Asma Zerki, uh, 2.9 millimeters new uh, microcopo hysteroscopy yeah. is somewhat fragile. Uh, can we couple it to a uh, hysteroscope internal shield? Yeah, sure. But it must be coupled with a, a sheet in order to get also um, uh, something to dilate if you want to use it like a hysteroscope and use the uh, sheet just to uh, get a more uh, rigid instrument in order to prevent any uh, rupture of the flexible hysteroscope because 2.9 is very, very thin. But if you use it with a sheet, it becomes much more resistant to, to ruptures. Yeah. Uh, your friend, Luis Alonso Pacheco, caro professor Montevecchi, sei un vero genio. Grazie per questa meravigliosa presentazione. Presentazione. I love you, Luis. Te amo, Luis. Parlami in spagnolo la prossima vez. Riccardo Lasmar. In italiano. Riccardo Lasmar, congratulations, Luigi. Very nice and interesting. Thanks. Thanks to all friends of mine. I hope that this presentation can be useful for every people who like to learn this, in my opinion, wonderful technique. And if you want, I can be disposable to, to help anyway, anyone who wants to ask me something to, uh, if there's any difficulties in order to achieve experience in learning this uh, uh, wonderful yeah. technique. Yeah. Okay, Professor, I, I think we are rich. Okay. Tell me. Now, uh, I think we are reaching the end of the, our webinar. Uh, I think you, you must be tired now because... Uh, uh, I was tired when I, when, I, when I started. Now I am totally dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but you are five hours ahead of us. And I think it was a rich discussion. Uh, I'm, I'm sure everyone now knows about to, to explain the difference between the colposcopy and my, microcopo hysteroscopy because, because your lecture was incredible. incredible. Um, I would like to, to have the final considerations. Uh, uh, please, Adriana, your... your your consideration, your last considerations, please. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Marcus and Thomas for the invitation. It was very nice to be here with you and Professor. Professor, as you told, you all, we always uh, still learning, still learning every day. 
Yes, it was wonderful to be with you, and I want you in my university with <laughs> us. <Excellent. laughs> Thank you very much. After the COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Stay safe, everyone. A big hug to every uh, friends who have the uh, passion to, to listen to my conference. Uh, I am very happy, and I want to say thanks to Thomas Moskowitz and to all participants to this webinar because it was really a pleasure for me to to share my experience on this topic because uh, as I hope you have understood I am in love with the uh, microcopper telescope I I would like it. I would like um uh, a congratulation uh, 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 now uh, and um, uh, I I thank uh, the the Marcos and Thomas and um, uh, the the last ask why the microscope stereoscopy is it stopped uh, uh, they uh, the is uh, microscope stereoscopy um, need uh, continue continue. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> yes, and uh, I would like to invite you in our uh, conference. Yes, Adriana. <laughs> in our, in yes. our university, Marcia. Yes, you, in yes. our university too. <laughs> consider, yes. consider just a thing that uh, the company stores stopped to sell the microcopy stereoscope because we are just 10 people around the world who perform microcopy stereoscopy. Mainly in Italy, we are three or four people in Italy and some people in, in Mexico. Yes. Sonia in Brazil, a friend of mine in Guatemala whose name is Iran Castillo. We are not many all over the world, so the, the company cannot continue the production if they sell just 20 instruments. But if you are interested in this technique and the more people will buy the instrument, the company will continue the production and microcolposcopy will be not like a, a, a panda, a, a <laughs> something that we must protect before they extinguish. Huh? Yeah. And your last considerations, Professor? My last consideration is that uh, uh, really I am very happy to be uh, with you tonight, thanks again to the organizing committee. Thanks to all people who uh, have been uh, uh, hearing and listening to my uh, speech. Uh, my only hope is that uh, uh, I've been uh, clear and hoping to express my uh, really love for this technique. I really believe that it can be the gold, it must be the gold standard in the uh, prevention of the cervical cancer. Yeah. For all types of difficulties that we can encounter just using uh, uh, pap smear and colposcopy alone. Yeah. Because Thank no you. one of these techniques can give us the information that is able to give us the microcopy stereoscope. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you told that uh, a doctor needs nine days to understand about microcopy stereoscopy. Yeah? But I think this is for you, only for Luigi, nine days, because uh, from uh, to Marcos, I think it's one year, two years to understand about microcopo. Um, it's a very difficult topic, and uh, you are expert in this in this uh, uh, kind of in, in your experience. And um, 
thank you all for being here with us and see you in the next webinar okay thank you thank, thank you. you thanks a lot goodbye bye. Thanks a lot. Bye. 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 bye to everyone goodbye adriana goodbye marcia goodbye goodbye, goodbye. goodbye. Thank, you. thank you very much thank you thanks very much to everyone we'll be around.